First of all, women are the food providers for their families. And if they live near uh, or around uh, dry forests, uh, the, the, the forests serve as part of their food pipeline, if you want. Uh, and they have to cook the food. So the dry forests for them also provides fuel and energy. So it's, it's absolutely important that uh, women not only have access, but also that the forests are taken care of uh, by them, which they do. They take care of them, but they also uh, need to be assisted to conserve uh, the forests. And, and, and one of the ways is to make sure that, uh, first of all, trees are replanted, and, and uh, I think also that the fuel that they get from is used in a, from the forest is used in an energy saving way so we have uh, uh, partnered with organizations other organizations to look at fuel efficient stoves that women can use um, so that they, they, they use less wood they spend less time cooking Well, it's, 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 I think it's more to do with the, the notion that it, you, you need to clear the forest to grow certain kinds of food. And it's not women, because women uh, grow the food for their families on very small plots. They don't need to clear the forest. But once you, you introduce so-called commercial agriculture where everything is flattened, it's, it's a contradiction, because on the one hand, it's about food production or agriculture development. But on the other hand, it, it destroys what already is available, and especially uh, to, to women. It's a question of assisting women to keep even the seeds or seedlings, or with WFP, we do what we call food for work, which is when we provide people with food during the lean season or during a, 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 a shock, we don't do it forever, like general food distribution. After a certain period, we then do productive food distribution where the, the productive members of, of, the, of the group are able to uh, work on commun communal, or household assets. So that would include planting trees, uh, water harvesting, uh, small irrigation uh, systems. And so we, they, we need to work with women's groups in particular to help them take their conservation approaches to scale. Uh, at the moment, it's, it's women doing it maybe on their own uh, and, and they just need to be assisted to do it more and do it better. I think if we have a critical mass of women and a critical mass of uh, activities that we can use to show what works, those voices rise. I don't think we can speak to power without evidence. So let's build the constituency of women by empowering them to, in, to, ha to show the irrefutable evidence. And often they will protect those assets with their lives, literally, should anybody try to take it away from them. But we need to strengthen women to, to be the voice that speaks to power. I, I, I think there is a, an increasing role, but I think the, the, the danger is at some level there's complacency, at another level there's fear. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know why people fear women, but uh, some people fear women because it's women power it's you know and and it, it it sounds like when women become empowered they will take power from somebody else whereas in fact they, they maybe even don't want the power in that sense 
but they want to conserve what they have and to make it a public good uh, rather than to sit on top of everyone. There's a misconception. But yes, I agree with you. There, there is a, a growing uh, uh, understanding. I'm not sure about acceptance of, of how women can change the world, in fact, uh, as we know it. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's, we can do that through women demonstrating, uh, changing their world, and therefore influencing changes in the greater world. You know, we work with the most vulnerable people. So high food prices knock them off their feet very quickly. So for them to gear up, to enjoy the fruits of uh, uh, the, 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 the cost, uh, rising cost of food, um, I think comes much later. But it also can come with how, what we do before we see the threat. You know, by connecting smallholder farmers into the market, not as a result of high food prices, but just because if they are connected to the market, they know uh, what to grow, for what market, the quality, the quantity, uh, working together, uh, you know, uh, uh, cooperating and, 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 uh, and through associations. And we as WFP have a program, in fact, that speaks to that. We, we, we have what you call purchasing for progress, where we're using our purchasing power uh, in purchasing food in developing countries. We use a percentage of that to target smallholder farmers, not only to buy from them, but to learn what it would take for them to be able to enter the open market fairly and get uh, fair prices for their produce. And what we're learning is that it starts with what seeds are they using? Um, what uh, is there enough water and how can they make sure that their plants are healthy? The, the whole value chain of uh, at harvest, um, how do they make sure that they don't have the normal 40% lo after harvest lost? And, and so it's the drying that is done uh, professionally and the storing that is done professionally. To avoid them also selling low during harvest and then in the lean season buying high. So I think we need to do that and expand that in good times and not wait because I think high food prices mean bad times for the most vulnerable and that's almost too late. Then they need food assistance.